What's up, Wargamers? Welcome back to the channel. We have a very exciting matchup for you today, and Michael is going to tell us about it. Today we have the Steam Tanks, the Greywater Fastness, and the Iron Might is here to show what's up. This is kind of a boogeyman uh, list right now, and we're excited to take it. Yes. Uh, uh, we voted against who can stand up against the might of the Greywater Fastness, and the Community voted, and it's going to be the Magikin and Nurgle, so the flies are here on the table, and this is going to be the first time that the community gets to see this fly list as well. If you're new to the channel, please take time to like, share, and subscribe. We really, really appreciate it, and we are going to continue playing the Warcoda battle plans. Warcoda is a supplement that Warhammer Weekly has put out. These are 12 very exciting, unique battle plans that are kitted out for Age of Sigmar 3. If you're interested in getting these battle plans, you can go to warcoda.com, and you can download the PDF for for free and they also have a little button to donate if you wish because they did put a lot of work into this and this whole series is sponsored by our very good friend the baron of dice he supplies all the dice that we roll on this channel check the links down below and support his business and support his website thank you baron so much for your support of our channel and of this series absolutely so with all that being said let's go ahead and take a look at the armies Thank you to all of our members for supporting this channel, especially the Lords and Commanders. If you're interested in extra battle reports and helping to support this channel, hit the link in the description box below. Go check out our channel partners, Baron of Dice and Grey Matter Games. They have some amazing products. There will be promo codes and links in the description box below. Magikin of Nurgle are back on the battlefield, super excited. They are going to be Drowned Men, which makes Puscoil Blight Lords battle line, and all the Puscoil Blight Lords get a pre-game move. This is going to be two battle regiments. My general is going to be the Lord of Afflictions. He has the Split Horn Helm for a plus one to his ward save, and then he has Overwhelming Stench, which means if he's within seven inches of you, you cannot receive or give commands, and he's okay in melee as well. Then we have Morbidex twice born in the list. This guy has monster keyword. He's got quite a few wounds with a three up save and obviously a five up ward. He does a fair amount of damage in melee and he also can bring back Nurglings if they're on the battlefield. I have two MSU units of plague drones. These guys get a fair amount of shooting into larger size units. They're pretty tanky, fast, and high bravery because they're demons. Then we have four units of two Pusgoyle Blight Lords. These are going to be moving before the battle begins. They pin things. They have eight wounds apiece with that four up save, five up ward, and they have a bunch of attacks. Finally, to round out the list, we have one unit of Plague Bearers. They're minus one to hit because of Cloud of Flies, and they're going to be standing on an objective somewhere on the battlefield. So there you have it, Drowned Men. Good little mix of demons and mortals. Let's see what Michael brought. The Grey Water Fastness has arrived onto the battlefield. Their subfaction ability allows me to all out attack up to three times, which is super helpful with all of these steam tanks. And then we're only taking one battalion today, which is a warlord, so I can get an extra relic. My general today is a steam tank commander. His command trait is Divine Champion, which is gonna be turning him into a priest. And then his artifact of power is the Glimmering, which is gonna give him some rerolls to hit wounds and saves. He has a special ability that allows him to all issue all out attack multiple times. We have the Marshal on Griffin. He's taking my other artifact of power, the Sigmarite Warhammer, which increases the rend and damage characteristic of his Warhammer, which turns this guy into just a real beat stick character, which is his whole job in the list. For foot heroes, we have the Warforger hanging out up front. He has a, he's in the list for an ability that he has, which he's gonna extinguish his, his Warforge, and he's gonna give everything within 12 inches, plus one to save. And then right behind him is the Pontifex. She's also a priest. She gets to roll on some different things, but she's here to give everything within 18 inches a five up ward. That's a prayer that she knows. The Command core is here in the list as well. They have a ton of abilities. They do a ton of stuff. They also get battle tactics and things like that, which is cool. But they're here for two main things. They turn off command points on a four up and they also heal because of the Sawbones ability. It wouldn't be a steam tank list without steam tanks, and we have three of them. They have a bunch of different abilities because they can over-pressurize their chambers, and they can shoot multiple times, they could run and charge, they can do all sorts of cool stuff, so they're great. We have a unit of cavaliers. Um, these guys are gonna be hanging out with the griffin, moving up a flank, pressuring objectives, trying to kill stuff. 
We have one unit of Dawn Riders. I love these guys as an ally because they're wizards, so they can still do some cast and unbind. They're very fast, so they're great at getting me objectives, doing surround and destroy, and things like that. And they're 120 points. That is the whole list. Let's take a look at this mission. Okay, today's battle plan is going to be focal points. This is a four objective battle, and we are deployed in opposite corners of the battlefield. There are two green objectives and two purple objectives on the battlefield. If at any time we hold both of these, we're gonna get an extra victory point, and then it's hold one, hold two, hold more. We're going to be scoring on battle tactics and grand strategies. My grand strategy is blessed desecration. I need to pick a terrain feature that's wholly within enemy territory and control it by the end of the battle. Michael, what is your grand strategy? Overshadowed, so I have to keep my battle line alive and then kill all of David's battle line. Seems doable. Let's go ahead and see who has initiative. All right, we are back from taking a look at the armies. We had some pre-battle stuff that we did. So the Wheel of Corruption is going to be Feck and Vigor. And in this battle round, all of my units are going to heal D3 instead of one in my hero phase. And then I've decided to give Michael the first turn because I didn't have enough movement to get into his army with the Puscoa White Lords. I did use my pre-game move to move a few units to the mid board and also to move a unit out of my deploy. You have two command points yep. and one primal dice. I also have two command points and one primal dice because my general is up in the sky with a bunch of plague drones right now. So that is it. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Who do you think is gonna win this battle? Is it gonna be a bunch of flies or is it gonna be a bunch of steam tanks? We'd really like to hear from you. And Michael, let's get into your turn. Uh, so first off, battle tactic, I'm going to get a spell off without it being unbound. We're out of one bind range and I have these Dawn Riders sitting here on a mystical uh, terrain. Uh, so we're just gonna cast for a mystic shield. Okay, it goes off. Cool. Yep. The Warforger is going to extinguish his crucible. Mm -hmm. uh, so he can't cast, but he gives them an aura of plus one to save. Beautiful. Cool. Everything's tanky. Tanky, tanky. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I see what you did there. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Um, the Pontifex is going to pray to Sigmar himself, and she's going to pray to give everything a uh, five up ward. And this goes off on a three up. It does not, and she periled. Okay. Uh, she, she has, has a, a four, four up ward. Yeah. And she can't do it. At the end of the hero phase, Sawbones can yes. heal her. <laughs> so, he's so she's going to heal her wound that she took. Thank you, Good. Sawbones. Uh, so that's, tanky. that's coming from the command core. That is it. Let's move. Starting here on the flank, the Cavaliers and the Marshal have moved up this flank. They're looking to support this objective and they're eyeing this unit of flies as well. The Iron Column moved into the center of the table. These two are screening for everyone else behind it and then there's a pile of heroes cowering behind their treads. And then the Dawn Riders went on a little adventure off to the side. They're hanging out over there. That is all of our movement. Let's get shooting. So we're gonna explain this interaction real quick before we get into it. The gray water fastness allows me to issue the all out attack to command up three times, uh, the first two times without that command point being spent. Now, they're not elite, so they, it does still have to come from heroes. And then mm -hmm. the uh, steam tank commander allows me to issue an all out attack without it being spent. He can issue it multiple times. And the mm -hmm. second time he issues it, then he has to spend the command point. Right, so for the for the price of one, one command point. command point, you're going to get to uh, all-out attack with all four of your tanks. Correct. Okay. And we're just going to use that one command point that he got during his generation. Uh, we are looking at some Puscoil Blight Lords right now that are going to be the target of the first shooting attack. Yep. And I am going to try to all-out defense, so let's see if the command corps deny that. On a four-up, the command corps says no nay, and you do say nay nay. And just as a reminder, we did uh, overpower the boiler and we're adding plus one attack to the attack characteristic to his steam cannon. Yeah, so, so you'll have a total of eight steam cannon attacks on threes and twos. Commander himself, one hit, one wound. Okay, that's Ren two, and I have a four up save, so this is going to be a six. Okay, that's a D3 plus two. For three damage. Okay, and that's going to be fives. Uh, okay, take three damage. The second steam tank in the back is gonna fire. They both miss. The third steam tank is gonna fire. They both miss. 
the fourth steam tank. <laughs> One hit. Okay. One wound. Six. We're good. Cool. So just to point that out, that was eight shots and two hits, and he saved one of them. Um, that is my turn completed. Let's score it up. Let's do it. There's this thing called the gray water fastness, and as the enemies advance on the gray water, they fire all of their cannons, and that's that's their gray water welcome. Uh, we did two damage. It was great. Yeah, it was really good. Well, you did three, <laughs> but then I did Feck and Vigor and healed D3 on the Pusqua Blight Lord unit that took three damage last turn. So now we've suffered two. We got four points. We completed our battle tactic, and we're holding two objectives. And we're going to hope that those cannons can actually do something next turn. We shall see. We're getting into David's turn. We have three command or primal, primal dice apiece, but it doesn't matter because you don't have any casts. And we each have three command points. All right, my battle tactic is going to be don't squabble, children. And I have to have a demon unit and a mortal unit holding this objective by the end of the turn because it is out of my territory and I don't control it presently. So that's what we're going to do. I have five summon points. I got one for my Feculent Narama, one for having no enemy units in my territory, and another three for being in my territory. So the cycle of corruption is feckin bigger right now that's why i healed and that is going to be my entire hero phase so we can go ahead and move all right maggotkin of nurgle have finished their movement these plague bearers are standing on a table edge i don't know why the magoth lord and these puscoil blight lords are standing next to this green objective here over here i brought in my general and his couple units of plague drones to do some havoc these ones threw an auto run and they're posting up a screen trying to limit some movement. That might backfire, but we're gonna try it. And then Puscoil Blight Lords, Puscoil Blight Lords. I did move these guys back just so the Demigriff Knights and the Griffin have a little bit harder time getting into combat. And that is it. We are gonna attempt some charges and see if we can steal a cheeky objective. So we'll try that now. Let's try this unit of play drones right here. They need a nine. There we go. Casual we'll go one. in. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to charge the general. He's crazy. He's good. He's going in. And then we're going to try to charge the third unit of plague drones. They also get a nine. Sure. That seems reasonable. I'm the luckiest gal in the room. Who needs pregame moves? I'll just make nine inch charges <laughs> with no bonuses. What's that? Three nine inch charges? <clears throat> Can do. Uh, we are going to issue a counter charge with this steam tank right here. Uh, we are plus one to this charge roll because of our banner, and we reroll charges. See, I rolled a seven, which is average, David. Seven's good. The steam tank has finished its movement, and it is a steel behemoth, so it does charge damage on a two up. Does D3 mortals for three mortal wounds. Okay, I'm going to take three. It's more damage than my shoe steam phase. Not letting it go, guys. All right, we're going to fight with some putrid blight kings. They're rend one on their 10 blighted weapon attacks. Rend one, I'm at a one up save, so go now. Cool. Okay, uh, basically, what we're trying to do here is just disease you. So, this is going to be 10 attacks, threes and threes. Okay, take four disease. And then make seven two up saves. Save them all. Okay, this is going to be 12 attacks, threes, threes. Two more disease. Okay, make five more two-up saves. Failed one. Okay, so he'll take a damage, and he's up to six disease. So we have a guardian sword and two lances going into these flies. We have two lances going into these flies, and we're leaving the general alone. Lances into the purple or the green flies. Uh, one hit, or two hit, and then no wounds. So just a mortal wound. Okay. And then with the guardian sword, one hit, one wound, red one. Okay, I fail it. Cool. Single damage. Okay. And then the two dashing hooves attacks into the green flies, uh, one hit, one wound, no rend. Okay, I take it. Single damage. That is it for the green flies. Okay, we'll take two damage after the ward save. 
And then the purple flies are going to take two lances, two hits, one wound, no rend. Fail. Single damage. Fail. And then the two dashing hooves attacks into the purple flies, nothing. That is their fantastic activation. Do your worst. Okay, so both of the profiles are the same on the Plague Sword and the Claws, Mouth Parts, and Sting. This is going to be 17 attacks, uh, fours because of Shining Company, and then threes to wound. And we can't all out defense or anything, guys, because, uh, well, we don't need an all out defense because we have the Mystic Shield, but uh, we can't issue or receive commands because of the general who's hanging out right there. So you took four disease there. Ugh, gross. Okay, it makes seven saves, no rend. These are three up saves. Failed three. Uh, I forgot to do charge damage with the with my general. Uh, it's going to do D three mortal wounds for two. Okay, so it killed the horse, and you're going to just have to deal with that. <laughs> I'm just going to take the damage that I took when he attacked me because that was my bad for forgetting. Back over here, looking at the party bus, this guy can issue and receive commands. Well, he can, but the general must standing behind him can. Uh, so we're going to tell him to all-out attack. He only has six attacks, but these are going to be twos, threes, rend two, two damage because of counter hurt. Okay, before you roll, go ahead. I'm going to try to all-out defense. Okay, I will say nay nay on a four-up. It's right here in this corner. Ready? Yeah. No, you get it. Okay. A bunch of them. Uh, take two wounds. This is going to be fives. Okay, failed them both. Four damage. Or two damage each. This is going to be fives. Okay, take a damage. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Lord of Afflictions is going to fight with his Fester Spike. Yeah. He is going to issue an all-out attack, bringing me down to one command point. Uh, four attacks, threes and threes because of the debuff, minus one. Okay, one disease. And three saves, minus one. Cool, I failed them all. <laughs> Uh, five damage. They're all dead. Yeah, they'll die to disease. No, that's, that's five damage. Oh, that's five, okay. One had a wound. Right on. Uh, and then we'll just make a pile-in move with our other set of play drums. All right, well, that's it. Let's score it up. That's it. We're back from my turn. I scored six points. I made three nine-inch charges, which was huge, and the uh, Puscoil Blight Lords only took a single damage against those negative two Ren, two damage attacks. So I'm very lucky. Before we roll off, I do need to roll disease on the tank. He's going to go up in one disease, maxing him out because he's in combat at the battle shock phase, and this is going to be mortals on fours. He's going to take five mortal wounds. Cool. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to roll a priority, and if I roll a one, uh, I'm swapping dice. <laughs> okay. Good luck to you. <laughs> Score is six to four. Oh, yep. All right, so <laughs> David's going to take the turn. I'm going to get some new dice, and then we're going to be back for battle round two, Nurgle. All right, guys, it is top of battle round two, Electric Boogaloo. We're about to get into it. I have the three command points because I'm going second. We each have a primal dice, and David has two command points. We each did a heroic action I'm trying to get another primal, not a primal uh, command point. We both failed. I am up to 10 summon points because I got another five this turn. My battle tactic is going to be surround and destroy this turn. And I healed everything for one. Wonderful. Because that's disgustingly resilient battle trait. And uh, that's it. Yeah, if Dave had let me go, I probably could have got my ward up. I would have been able to heal that steam tank. And I would have been able to reposition right now. He's going to be able to max war in a really strong way and definitely kill that tank, steam tank. But I have the battle shock dice in my pocket now. And that was, I still don't want to talk about <laughs> they, how many ones that was. They look really good. Yeah, they look like they're going to be really good. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into my movement and we'll be back to show you what I did. Okay, we are finished with my movement. These Puscoil Blight Lords literally just moved as far forward as they had to to complete Surround and Destroy. The Magoth Lord threw a run roll and moved 12 inches. I summoned in some Nurglings for eight summon points, so I'm down to two. Over here, the Plague Bearers are helping me complete my Surround and Destroy within six of the battlefield edge right there. And then this is where all the fun is. 
We've got one unit of pus coils right here that's moving into charge. The ones that are in combat pitting the steam tank, another unit that's fixed into charge, and then behind them we have some plague drones that are holding down the objective. My general threw a run roll of five inches, which made 13, and he has overpowering stench. So right now the steam tank commander cannot issue commands. And then we have three plague drones right there, helping me complete surround and destroy. So that is everything. Let's go ahead and look at some charges. All right, Puscoil Blight Lords are gonna charge. Got a pretty easy charge. Let's see what they get. Four is fine. All right, with this one, only one within range to do impact hits. It's going to be on a four up. Okay, and it's gonna be D3 mortal wounds for one. Cool. The next unit of Puscoil Blight Lords charging into the steam tank. Should probably have two dice in my hand. Uh, four is not enough. I'm gonna try to re-roll that. Would you like to try to stop that? Yes. Okay. Nope, you can do it. Okay. <laughs> okay, nine is much better. In case anyone is curious of why I'm not unleashing hell, all of my tanks are within seven inches of the general. So, no commands. It's good times, man. I'm yep. telling you, it's good times. Uh, so let's start with the Dolores Toxin first for charge damage. This is on a two up. And D3 Mortal Wounds for one. And then the other guy on a four up, yes, for D3 Mortal Wounds for two. We have suffered 10 Dimaggio. That's all the charges I'm going to do. So let's go ahead and get started with the Wounded Blight Kings first. This is going to be 10 attacks, threes, threes, minus one, one. Cool. He'll take two disease. So roll him up to four, because he would have taken one at the, uh, for being in combat as well. And then threes. Make seven two up saves. Held three of those, so he's dead. Okay. Uh, that's going to be the end of the combat. I am going to pile in with a couple units so I can get that other objective and we'll be back to score me up. We are back from my turn. It was a big one. Uh, I scored seven points. Mm -hmm. I got all my charges and lifted the steam tank before he was able to recoil. I shut down the steam tanks being able to receive commands because they're within seven of my general. Uh, and I scored seven points because I hold all four objectives right now and completed my battle tactic. I get two extra points for holding both of the focal points on either side. So that brings me to 13. So the score is 13 to four, and we're gonna go ahead and get into Michael's turn. I'm up to four command points. We don't need any primals because I'm not going to be even casting. And um, I'm up to two command points. I am gonna try and get another, another command point with my general. Yes. Uh, I am going to do Finest Hour on my general for my heroic action, just to dissuade Michael from trying to kill him. That way, hopefully, he can get within that aura to shut things down next turn, and that gives me another hub for summoning. It's important to keep him alive. So now he's on a two-up save with a four-up ward. Not a good target for shooting at all. Um, so that is what I'm going to do. My battle tactic this turn is going to be raise the banners high, and I have to take this objective that David owns right here with the command core. Uh, who are standing right there. So that should be easy enough to do. I have a few things to do in my hero phase. None of it's gonna be casting. We're going to extinguish the crucible, so give it that aura of plus to save. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna overpower all of our engines so that we get additional attacks yep. with the cannon and the, ste and the, uh, the steam cannon. And mm -hmm. then we're gonna try and pray with the pontifex mm -hmm. for a five up ward. Hey. Nailed it. You got okay. your five up ward. That's a huge aura. It's an 18 inch aura of a five up ward. Hero phase is complete, so we can move and we're going to throw it into reverse and get the <laughs> heck out of dodge. All right, we'll be back. At the starter movement, we advance in formation with the Cavaliers right here and the Marshal. Um, everybody ran into the building and then the steam tanks uh, threw it in reverse and retreated backly. Backly is definitely not a word. They treated, retreated backwards. Um, that is all of our movement. Our whole army is right here in this little tiny corner. Nurgle owns the entirety of the map. We are going to do shooting, and there's no way it could possibly get any worse. Cool. So we're going to issue the all-out attack. We're going to get it three times. 
Uh, for the third time that we have to pay for it, we're going to use the, um, the one that we got at the start of hero phase. So we're still at a bazillion command points that we don't need. We're going to start with the main steam cannon. Okay. This is going right here to the unit in the front. Okay. I am going to issue or attempt to issue an all-out defense. Uh, let's say no, no on a four up. You can have it. Okay. The main cannon hitting on threes. Two hits. Wounds on twos. Two wounds. Ren two. Okay. This is going to be a five. We're good. I hate you, David. <laughs> uh, 3d6 with the steam gun. Steam gun. So that's 13 shots. All right, here we go. Twos and threes with this, the steam gun. That was a two. That didn't roll. Eight. No rent. Threes. They're all single damage. Okay, fives. Okay, take two. And then his uh, long rifle fails to hit. The cannon next to him is going to fire at the same target. Firing the steam cannon. They both hit. They both wound. It's still run too. Fives. Okay, they go through. Five. Plus three. Eight, eight, damage. eight damage. Okay. Looking for fives here. Uh, I'm going to take three damage. 3d6 from the steam gun for five shots. <laughs> they all hit. Four wounds, no rend. Threes. Uh-oh. Fives. Why are you failing those ones? Okay, I take a damage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Boop. I got to stop putting up things in the, in the pole that gives you a five-up ward. Uh, <laughs> the last cannon. Here we go. Two shots. One hit. One wound. Make your five-up save. I did not. Okay. Five dam or uh, four damage. Uh, that's four damage. So one guy dies, and another one is going to take two wounds. Okay. The steam gun. Nine shots. Five. No rent. Okay, threes, and then five. Okay. Good talk, everybody. Um, that was shooting phase. Believe it or not, that was shooting phase. We're going to move into charges. At the start of the charge phase, my griffin is going to order engage the foes, and he's going to give a plus one attack to the knights standing next to him. So let's charge with the knights. A nine. Nice. Okay. With the Griffin. Five. Five's good. Then I will stomp you. Okay. <laughs> take that a mortal. That is a better option. <laughs> okay. I will take a mortal. Huzzah! On the chin. All right. So we're going to activate the Cavaliers first. They have more damage potential. Um, we're going to all out attack, bringing us down to three command points. Four attacks each with the cavalry weapons and five attacks from the Arch Knight's Blade because we engaged the foe. Nice. Nice. Oh. Eleven at minus two. Two damage pop. The sixes. Okay. We're going to roll out this ward twice. It's 20 damage total. We're going to take... Nine with the first one. And then we're going to take eight with the second one. Nine and eight is 17. So they are dead. All right, that is the entirety of my turn. We're going to score it up. Show you how we did. We are back from Michael's turn. Michael, how many points? Uh, we scored four points, or three points, excuse me. We hold one and we completed our battle tactic. Um, so the score is 7 to 13 in favor of David. Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty significant points differential. Um, but we lifted some flies. We yes. finally connected. We did some damage. Um, so let's see if we can, can keep the momentum going and rolling into battle round three. Let's see if we can steal initiative and make do the double. Yes. Ready? You ready? Yes. Good luck to you, good sir. Good luck to you. Hi-ya. Okay. I did not. 
I have to go. Yep. So we will be back for battle round three, Maggotkin of Nurgle. Okay, we are back for battle round three. It's turning up Nurgle so far. Uh, things are going good. I have 10 summon points right now, two command points, and one on my general. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have Primal Dice, and it doesn't matter because neither of us are trying to cast this game. Yeah, I'm never, never going to cast again. Never going to get it, never going to get it. Uh, I am going to do Lead into the Maelstrom this turn Ooh. because I need to get my general within seven so he can't issue commands. Sure. And he can't kill anything. And I feel confident that he can survive whatever happens to him yep. uh, when he goes in. So that's that. And that's my hero phase. Did we talk about the fact that I didn't do her any heroic actions because I Oh, can't? yes, yes. So the cycle of corruption disallows Michael from doing heroic actions, rally, or inspiring presence this turn. Uh, or this, this battle round. So that's why. Uh, I do want to try to do one thing. I do want to try to rally a fly with the command point that I generated. Would you like to have that be the command? Yeah, you can roll on a six. Go okay. For it. Cool. Oh, it was worth it. It's always worth it to try to get eight wounds back. Uh, okay, so I'm down to do command points, and that's my whole hero phase. Let's go ahead and move. Okay, we are done with my movement phase. These Puscoils have a nine inch charge because I'm going to have to hop that impassable, but I'm going to try it. Then we have the Nurglings move forward to screen the Magoth Lord who's chilling right there. He's in range to shoot into the Demigriff Knights. We summon to Sloppity for later because he will disallow pylons to the demon units that are the second rank. We've got plague drones here. Two of them are in range to shoot into the Demigriffs. We've got two separate units of Puscoil Blight Lords right there. And then back here we have three more, or uh, yeah, one more unit of three plague drones. And then my general just moved within three of everything. Nothing could redeploy because of his artifact. And then we ran the plague bearers. They rolled a six and they ran up there. So I'm down to three summon points and we got a little bit of shooting to do. Okay, Morbid X Twiceborn is gonna shoot his three attacks. This is threes and twos minus one, one going into the demogriffs. Two hit, two wound. David, why can't I all out defense? And a five up ward. <laughs> okay, one unit of plague drones in range. They're gonna throw their death's heads. Uh, two of them are in range, I should say. So this is gonna be 10 attacks because it's based on unit size. Three is one disease. So all out defense. I didn't say that. I just moved the, the token and stared at David. Make five saves. Failed you. Okay. Let's charge the two man of flies first. Seven's good, they're gonna go in. On a two up from the Dolores Toxin, D3 mortal wounds, three mortal wounds into the Demigriff Knights. And then roll the other one. It hits, and one more mortal wound. So you've got four mortal wounds total. I take three. Okay. We'll charge the single out Blight King as well. He gets an eight, eight's good. Okay, Dolores Toxin on a two up, yes. D3 mortal wounds, that one's gonna go into the Griffin for three. So two, pick one. Let's try with these other Blight Kings, they need a big charge. Four's not enough. My Chad of a general is going to charge. Six is good. Okay, so I was just reading a rule. The rack and ruin charge damage from these guys is each unit within an inch. So we're going to try to give the Griffin D3 mortal wounds on a four up. It fails. And then we're going to do the general on two ups into the steam tank and into the Griffin. Steam tank first, nothing, and then Griffin. D3 for two. Okay, so he has suffered three wounds. Uh, we're just going to roar your general. Your general is roared. Okay, sounds good. We're going to declare a counter charge from here. And it's going to be into this steam tank right here. Whee! I see your general. On a two up? On a two up. We'll take D3 mortals for the one mortal wound. Uh, he takes it. Okay, the general is going to fight first. He's going to put everything into the griffin. Okay. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and fight into the Griffin. This is four attacks, threes and threes. Make it happen, Captain. Okay, he hits with two. Wounds with one, minus one. Filled it. Okay, that's gonna be one damage. Filled it. Claws and mouth parts, threes. Threes, five, no rend. And then fives, and take one more. Okay, he's all done. The griffin is gonna turn around and smack David's general before we take any more damage. Okay. And with our razor claws, we have six of those. We sit on fours. One wound, uh, rend, one. Okay, this is gonna be a four up. I failed it. And it's two damage. Okay, and then fours. Uh, we take a damage. Two attacks with the deadly beak. Two hits. Five, fail. Four damage. Okay, this is going to be fours. He takes two damage. And then the war hammer. We're playing with Warhammer, with Warhammer. One at rend, three. Okay, this is going to be a six. Okay, damage. Four damage. Four. Four. Okay, fours. Take a damage. All right, that's where your ward showed up. I was, we put a good chunk on him though. Put a good chunk. Purple Blight Lord. He's gonna try to hit the Griffin. Yeah, yeah. this is five attacks, threes and threes. Okay, everything hits, and then threes. Four wounds, minus one rend. Fours. Take two. Damage. Single. Take two. Okay, and then we are going to do the mount. This is threes and threes, no rend. Okay, one, no rend. Save it. Cool, he's done. I guess we go with the knights who we're, we're staring at. Mm-hmm. Archblade's knight, or the Arch Knight's blade. Uh, four attacks. Three hits. Two wounds. Oh, gotcha. Okay, save none. Okay. There's two, two damage. Two damage each. Uh, take a damage. Okay. Cavalier weapons, these are threes and threes. Those hits. One wound, run one. Okay, fives, single, Yep. Uh, take a damage. And then our mighty stallions, they want some. Uh, three wounds, no rend. Okay, fell two. Single damage from horse, from the horse. Okay, and take a damage. Sweet. 10 attacks, threes and threes, everything into the knights. Two disease. Okay, cool. Threes, four saves, minus one into the demigriffs. Failed three of those. Okay, single damage. I'm gonna take two, so another knight bites the dust. Okay, this is the rest no. of the attacks from the mounts. We give you one disease. And make four saves, no rend. Threes? Hey, we did it. All right, let's start with the steam tank that uh, didn't counter charge. It's got six attacks, three threes, rend one, two damage. We got four hits. We got one wound. Uh, four. We're good. And then the rest of them. Oh, it's going great, everybody's still rolling like a champ. Uh, take two at rend two. Uh, fives. Okay. Uh, two damage piece. And then fours. Okay, he takes three. Okay, so that gets him. Oh, we did it. <laughs> nice job. Just barely. <sighs> okay, so at the end of the combat phase, I'm going to pick one enemy unit with a wounds characteristic of three or less that is within three inches of my Puscoil units. Mm -hmm. I'm going to roll one dice for each model that's within three inches of that enemy unit. For each roll that exceeds the enemy's wounds characteristic, the enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. So, so two, two dice, dice, mortals on threes? Correct. 
So one mortal wound into the Demigriff Knights. Okay, it's another knight down. We're into Battle Shock now. We're gonna go up by one disease here. So we're gonna roll five dice. And mortals on fours into the Demigriff Knights. Two mortal wounds. We need a five. All right, so he's still alive. Let's see if he survives Battle Shock, though. Yes. Nope, he runs. No inspiring presence this, this turn because of the Wheel of Corruption. Yep. Uh, I did lose my general, but I still have a hero on the board, and I've got some good board control. So let's snap off, score me up, and then we'll get into Michael's turn. Okay, we are back from my turn. I scored six points that time. I still hold this focal point. Got my battle tactic and hold one, two more. So that brings me to 19. So the score is seven to 19. We're getting into Michael's turn. I have two command points plus one on my Magoth Lord because I generate on a two up now. Uh, we're not worrying about primal dice because neither one of us are casting in this game. And I'm down to three summon points because I summoned a Sloppity. So I can't do a heroic action because of the Wheel of Corruption. So we'll mm -hmm. go right into Battle Tactic. And it's gonna be led into the Maelstrom. Um, we're on the back foot, so I'm gonna take my whole army and just shove really hard right now. Mm -hmm. We'll see what yeah. happens. We are extinguishing the, the Crucible to give everything plus one to save. We're overpressurizing all of our tanks to get pluses to attack. Um, Doc Bones is gonna heal the General or the Griffin for three wounds. Okay. And you have a heal prayer on your general. I do. Uh, I don't remember what the range of heal is. We're going to go ahead and pray with uh, the Pontifex to try and get uh, a five out of four for the whole army. It goes off. Great. Okay. Now I have two options with my commander. I can either pray to heal and mm -hmm. heal the griffin up for D3. That's an answer value of three, which is nice. I like that. I'm also kind of a fan of doing his prayer, Hammer of Sigmar. It's a four up. And it's an aura of plus one to wound in melee. Mm -hmm. What's nice about that is I'm thinking about just taking my whole army and shoving it in your face. So mm -hmm. giving up a, a four up. Let's do it. Hammer of Sigmar on okay. a four up. That's what we're praying for. We got it. Very nice. That's pretty awesome. So that's Beautiful. from Divine Champion. Like I said, it's a 12 inch aura of plus one to wound in melee. We can go into movement and just like Danny DeVito said, start blasting. Pressing forward into battle, the cities of Sigmar surge forward. The command corps moves up. The Pontifex moves up. What is she doing? Even the Alchemite Warforger is up. The Griffin is right where he wants to be. He loves it. And here is the armored column moving forward into battle. David rolled a redeploy right here. They moved back. But we're eyeing this objective anyway, so we care not. That is it for movement. Um, so the general is going to fire into this one-off Blight Lord. Blight Lord right here. Okay. That's the one that I'm going to all-out defense, I think. Let's take it away on a four-up. Nope, you cannot have it. With the main cannon, obviously all these guys are all on attacking. Main cannon. They both hit. They both fail the moon. Good job, Steam Tank Commander. Crushing. Three attacks, or 3d6 with the steam gun. Twos and threes. So take five at no rent. Okay, fours. Fail three and then fives. Yep. Uh, saved them all. Cool. And then his uh, long rifle. Excellent. This cannon right here is firing into this squad, and then the smaller gun is firing over into the Blight Lord. Okay, big gun into the Plague Drone squad. Big gun, here we go. One hit, one wound, uh, run two. Okay, it goes through. Uh, for three damage. Uh, triple sixes, baby, we good. Sounds about par for the course. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine. So this is the steam gun over here into the single off light lord. Steam gun just loves it, man. Take eight, no rent. Fours. Okay, I fail four. And then fives. I fail three, takes three damage. Okay, yeah, we gotta kill this guy. Main gun and steam gun are both going into that knucklehead. Okay. We, we now have to overkill him, which I hate so, so much. Uh, main gun. 
Uh, one at Ren 2. Failed it. For three damage. Takes two. Steam gun. Ten. Three. So six, no rent. Okay, fours. Failed two. He's dead. Well, it again took my entire army to kill one guy. <laughs> it has really been consistent where we're, we're actually only doing about eight damage, nine damage at range. Yep. Um, yep. Coolio, let's get charging. Steam tank, charging in. Six. Two up. For D3. Take one. Steam tank number two for six. So he needed a seven. He didn't get it. Uh, let's re-roll for a command point. Okay. There's nine. Two up. D3 for three. Okay, I'll take two more. The commander wants some. You got a five. Five should be good to there. On a two up. D3 for two. Okay, that's two damage. That's going to drop one, and one's going to take a wound. I now have to charge the griffin. All right, he's fine. Now the command core will go in. Cool. Monstrous actions, we're going to roar. You're roared. And then we have to activate the griffin first, <laughs> right? Okay. Before you activate anything, Sloppity is going to say, no piling into demons. That might come up later. All right, so let's all attack with the griffin then. We have six attacks with the claws, because we're back on top bracket. Okay. And we are going to hit on threes and wound on threes. Nice. Oh, I wound on twos. You do wound on I twos. I wound on twos. Noise. So take five at Ren 2, or Ren 1. Uh, I save two. Uh, two damage each. Fives. Okay, it'll take four damage. He's got four wounds left. The Mighty Beaks, they both hit. They both wound, run two. Save one fail. Four damage. And fives. Dead. Dead. We've got two play drones going into this tank right here. Sweet. This is gonna be 16 attacks. Two disease. And make six two up saves. Failed one. Failed two. Okay. Two damage each. Correct. All right, so we're going to activate the first steam cannon. Steam tank. Uh, missed four times. Take two wounds at run one. Two wounds at run one gives me sixes. Okay, and then damage. Two damage each. Okay, and then fives. Okay. Steam tank number two. He hit much better. These are on threes, though. Take three. Sixes. Okay, and then fives. Okay, take another damage. So the steam tank is up to three. So on fours, takes two more wounds. Fives. Take one. The other one takes one at the end of the combat phase. He takes a mortal wound. Fine, uh, he's out. On these play drones, I'm gonna roll bravery. On a one, I'm going to get a play drone back. Nope, so we're good. Perfect, let's score it up. All right, we're done with Michael's turn. Michael, how many points? Uh, four points, which in normal games would be respectable, but in this game, it's not great. 11 to 19. I still have a lot of stuff on the board, and I was just holding the objectives on my side of the battlefield pretty well, so a double is pretty mandatory right here. I double like. is mandatory, so here's yep. what we're going to do. If I get a double, we will uh, play another round, see if I can pull it out. If I don't get the double, we're just going to shake hands and score it up off camera. Perfect. Perfect. Let's do it. Good luck to you, good sir. Good luck to you. Hi oh, the cities of Sigma. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. 
So guys, the reason we can talk this out right now is I'm going to do Intimidate the Invaders right now. Uh, you can't stop me. I'm going to get six more points. Yeah. I'm going to move my Magoth Lord and my uh, Blight Kings around and charge into the juicy bits and lift everything but Steam Tanks and Griffin. And then I'm just going to, uh, you know, pile in and then make it to where you can't pile in. Actually, in Battle Round 4, you can't pile in anyway because it's the cycle of corruption. So the, the points differential is just so high that there's just, there's just no way that I can come back from it. Yeah, I think the best that you could do is hold these two objectives for two more turns and uh, deny my grand strategy. But I'm going to deny your grand strat because you know, I just have too much stuff on the board. Yeah, there's I've, I've no got, way I can get to it. Right, he can't overshadow because I am 30 inches away. Um, so, yes, we're going to get a final score for you. We'll clean up and we will be back for the wrap up. All right, guys, we are here for the wrap up. If you were with us at this point, thank you so much for joining us. Comment down below what your favorite parts or what you hate about this game was and what do you think about these War Coda missions. So after, after it all shook out, we agreed that uh, David's just going to be max for the last, last two turns. I'm only going to have one more easy intimidate and maybe hold a point with those steam tanks that are hanging out over here. So we gave me three more points, bringing me up to 14. Mm -hmm. And then David has... 36. Good lord. Because I was at 19, I would have scored 14 on objectives and that kind of stuff, and then I would have got my grand of uh, hold that terrain. Just because I had the Magoth Lord, I could have summoned more units on there, and I had the Puscoils. So yeah, that was a that was a very strong game for the Magatkin of Nurgle, which was nice. If you're a member and you saw the last battle report they were in, then you know that they needed to try to redeem themselves. And they played really, really hot. I mean, I handed you the turn, yep. took three damage in the first turn. It's great. I went in to where I could get close enough to do Nurgle things if I got a double. I got the double. I stopped the general's commands with my general, and then I did it again in battle round three. He did die in battle round three, but because of that, I was able to just outscore the cities. Uh, also, of note, when I dropped my three units out of reserve, I got all three nine-inch charges. Without a Didn't have to reroll. They just all went in, uh, lifted the Dawn Riders, and I got an extra point on that. So everything just kind of clicked and went right for Maggotkin in the first three battle rounds. Yep. And when there's a 12-point deficit in battle round three, that's I mean, even, it's it doesn't like, matter if doesn't Michael matter. kills my army anymore, yeah. right? So that easily could have gone the other way. Michael could have won priority in two or three, and he could have killed some more stuff and gotten his army out of the pin. But that's what this army does. I was apprehensive of that happening when we started this battle because of the deploy. The L-shaped deploys were sure. far away. Uh, but you know, winning priority and being able to continue moving my army forward, getting some big charges, was big. I'm going to give MVP to the Lord of Afflictions because... Michael's whole sub-faction is to unleash hell four times, all out defense four times, all that goodness. And the Lord of Afflictions just waved his command trait and was like, no, you cannot. Um, so he's got to be MVP. I'm going to give LVP to the Magoth Lord. I feel like I could have gotten a little bit more utility out of like three beasts of Nurgle or something like that. But he's just a menace because you know you can't kill him because sure. he heals half of his wounds, three up save, five up ward. So I may redact that. I might not switch him out. He's a pretty good piece. Uh, he just didn't do much. So that's why I'm giving him LVP. The whole rest of the army functioned exactly how it was supposed to. Yeah. Even plague drones, man, they took a charge from two steam tanks and there was still one alive. They right. did five damage with all their two damage attacks. So yeah, uh, it's absolutely good game for them. So let's talk about the steam tanks. You've been working on these for a long time. These are super dope 3D prints. I love their rules and how they function. Let's talk about it a little bit. We got to talk about the dice rolls. I usually don't like blaming games on dice rolls, mm -hmm. but there were some dice roll problems. I was definitely having some dice roll problems. I was mm -hmm. definitely shooting significantly under statistically average. 
Yeah. Every single round. Average of eight to 10 damage with a thousand points of steam tanks is, not is okay. insane. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the only armies where you're going to run into that situation. So. What I mean, I'm not even hitting though. It's like, yeah. you, <laughs> I'm not That's even true. hitting you. You have to hit you. first. You yeah. have to be able to hit first. But for, for you to be able to do any damage. Griffin was cool. Griffin uh, was the MVP of the game. He was really the only thing out here actually being a menace and doing I think damage. he killed like four Puscoils on his own. On his own. He, he slaps way harder than he should uh, and way more than he looks. So you look at his war scroll by himself, he kinda, he's kind of blah. Uh, but him with those knights sitting next to him, he can actually come in and do some hurt. Mm -hmm. The uh, Dawn Riders, I brought, brought them in there to get two battle tactics, right? I needed them to do a cast and give me a surround and grab me an objective. Um, that should have happened, and mm -hmm. David made three nine-inch charges. So uh, what are you gonna do? Yeah, dude. And it then was they- Super lucky. Then they got clapped with, even with a minus one to hit and Mystic Shield on them. So it's just like, they, they're LVP for sure. Yeah. Um, a close second LVP is the first team tank that just walked out, counter charged, did no damage, and then immediately got clapped for it as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that also helped me huge because that's one less steam tank that does damage at range, right? right. So yeah, taking the mid board, lifting some of the missile weapon attacks and, uh, and the point swing just made that a, uh, a tough game for the cities. Yep. I, I love this list though, it's amazing. I hope they don't change too much because my personal experience playing cities, they don't seem ridiculous. No. Uh, I do think they need to just clarify some rules with Command Core and then, uh, I don't know. So, and this also know. goes to show you, right, that like this list went really well at LVO. Yeah. But who's the guy playing it, right? Gavin is an amazing player. Right. So, you know, I consider myself like a pretty okay player, but this list clearly didn't overpower anything. It was. Mm -hmm. Clearly very fine, yeah. um, but Gavin's an amazing player and could play a very similar or stronger list uh, at a very, very high level. So yes. there's that too. Yeah. I don't, I'm not entirely sold that this list is straight out busted. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I think that it does, uh, it does do some serious hurt on certain lists, but there are natural counters in the game of Age of Sigmar and there always will be. There's 20, sure. however many armies, right? So yeah, this was community voted. We really appreciate all of you that have stuck around and watched the entire battle report. We hope that you enjoyed it and thank you to all of you uh, that voted it. When I saw Nurgle, I was a little happy because I was a little bummed after I tried to run the flies the first time. Uh, and yeah, they can be really good. They, they need some conditional things to happen for them to be good and to be able to get all of their battle tactics. But when everything clicks, you know, what, what are you gonna do? They're just so hard to shift, right? Right, so, it's a ton of wounds with a five up ward. It's yeah. Great. So we really hope you enjoyed that battle. Go check out warcoda.com, download the PDFs for free to get yourself these awesome battle plans and check out Warhammer Weekly. We wanna give a big shout out to our sponsor as well, Baron of Dice. Hit that link down below, go check out his website. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you ne again next week for another battle report. Thank you to all of our members for supporting this channel, especially the Lords and Commanders. If you're interested in extra battle reports and helping to support this channel, hit the link in the description box below. Go check out our channel partners, Baron of Dice and Grey Matter Games. They have some amazing products. There'll be promo codes and links in the description box below.